I'm going to count all the features or the qualities of a 4D cube and a 4D triangle, but really it's more professionally known as a 4 simplex. Now, there are families of shapes all throughout math. There's a family of cubes, family of triangles, family of spheres, family of balls, family of toruses. And the idea for these families is that there's one member of the family per dimension. Just one example for each dimension of space. Here's the family of cubes. So the words you've probably learned are point, line, square, and cube. All of these shapes belong to the family of cubes. So we can also call them a 0D cube, 1D cube, 2D cube, and 3D cube. The rules of the game today say that when we count the features of these shapes, the corners will count as vertices, and the faces, these 2D faces, will always be surrounded by edges. Okay, this is a combinatorial exercise, so we're actually going to count all of those parts as vertices, edges, and faces. Now, a 0D cube, a point, is just one vertex and nothing else. A 1D cube, a line, is two vertices connected with one edge. And a 2D cube is the center shape. It's a square, and it has four vertices, four edges, and one face. And a 3D cube, just cube, is eight vertices, 12 edges, six faces, and one piece of 3D volume, which I'm going to call for now a filling. In order to count the features of the 4D version of a cube, we have to understand boundary as a topological concept. This is a messy, casual definition, but we can think of the boundary of a math object as the parts of the object that are on the edge of it. This term on the edge kind of feels different in different dimensions, but I can tell you one thing. No matter what kind of math object we're talking about, the boundary will always be one dimension lower. In 1D, like letters of the alphabet, if you considered them to be infinitely thin, in 1D, the boundary of an object will always be 0D. Now, I've drawn three letters here, O, E, and D. The letter O has no boundary at all. There are no stabby bits or dead ends. It's a perfect circle. The letter E, on the other hand, has three dead ends, three stabby points. And so we consider it to have three boundary points. Now, here's something very important. The corners of the E and the T intersection do not count as boundary points. If you're standing at that upper left corner of the letter E, technically you could go two different directions. And that's the reason why we don't count it as a boundary point. This is also the reason why the letter D has no boundary points. It has these two corners, sure, but you could always go two different directions if you're standing at one of those corners. And also, it's equivalent by distortion to the letter O. And so it would be really weird if D had boundary and O did not. Now, something that I hear very frequently is that with the letter O, sort of the inside surface and the outside surface of it should count. Here's the thing, though. These are 1D shapes. When we think about 1D world, going inward and outward are not directions that even exist for this letter. And that's hard to conceive of for any dimensional space except three-dimensional space. But there's no such thing as inward or outward. Therefore, those surfaces aren't really things that exist, and we can't count that as part of the boundary. Moving up a dimension, the boundary of a 2D object is always 1D. Think about 2D objects as being objects cut out of paper and think about edges of these paper objects that you could get a paper cut on. And so the annulus has a two-part boundary. It has two boundary circles, an inner circle and an outer circle. The disk, on the other hand, on the right side, only has one boundary circle. The sphere, a perfect soap bubble, has no boundary at all. I know that I've rendered it here with a dotted line to sort of represent an equator. But that's just for artistic purposes. That doesn't count as the boundary. That doesn't count as an edge of the object. Similarly, a hollow donut shape, a torus, infinitely thin, has no sharp edges that you could cut yourself on. It's perfectly smooth. And so that also has no boundary. 
moving up a dimension again. The boundary of a 3D object is always 2D. Now, this is the easiest one to conceive of. We can hold a solid cube like a die in our hands, and the boundary of it are the parts that you can touch with your hands, just that like outer layer of molecules that you can literally contact with your skin, or the parts of the object that are touching the air. So with a 3D cube, a solid cube, the boundary is everything on the outside of it that you can touch. And for the purposes of this lecture, it's all the faces, all the edges, all the vertices.